First of all, let me tell you how sorry I am for this occasion. Some of y'all I know, some of you I don't. Sorry we've met on these these circumstances. But um, Mrs. Terry Catherine Bowen, she was 39, died suddenly Thursday, September 19th, 2024, at Bacon County Hospital in Alma. She was born July 3rd, 1985 in Waycross to the late Merton Allen Sellers and Kathy Moore Sellers. Terry was employed by Dollar General in Alma. Survivors include her husband, Kevin, Keith Bowen in Alma, four children, Dylan Prescott, Garrett Prescott, Logan, help me pronounce that, LaRue, thank you, brother, and Clara LaRue. Her mother, Kathy Moore Sellers of Waycross, sister, Elisa Sellers, Troy Self of Waycross, brother, Albert Sellers of Waycross, 
Uncle Donald, Moore, Kim of Waycross, and numerous nieces and nephews. And I'll read this that's in the thing here. It's called Family Tree, where hearts give freely and love prevails, where secrets are told and sweet memories live. It's where we begin and where we will end. My family, all my love I give. If I die young, bury me inside, lay me down on a bed of roses, sink me in the river at dawn, send me away with the words of a love song. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, make me a rainbow, I'll shine down on my mother, she'll know I'm safe with you when she stands under my When we all become Christians, if you choose to do that, to do that, you know life is full of choices. We have a birth date and we have a death date. The Bible says we all have an appointment with death. And so sorry that it was her time. But as Christians, we have a duty to try to win people over to the Lord. The Bible says in Ezekiel 
13 and 18 through 20 that if we don't, that their blood is applied to our hand. In other words, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. So let me read it to you. When I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Some of y'all may say, well, you just pick it on the sinners. No, I'm not. If you read it further down, I'll let you know that even, the, well, let me just read it to you. Yet if you warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. So in other words, I'm standing here trying to witness to you now, if you're a sinner, and convince you to choose God. You know, we can live life full, think we're having it all good, while we can do what we want to do. But when it comes to times like this, we wonder why. Why things didn't work out. Verse 20, and it says, And again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall let die, because you have not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at your hand. See, even if you claim to be a Christian, and you don't choose the right way, in other words, laying the stumbling block there, you know there's a lot of false prophets out there that convince you to go different ways. So if you don't read the Bible, how, do, how will you know which way to go? So that's why it's very important that we read the Bible, state it for ourselves. Don't take man's word for it. So now, if you turn over to Luke chapter 16, verse 13, verse 13, it says, you know, we have a free will. Like I say, in life, you have a free will. So that gives you the free will to choose which path you're going to take. So, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammoth both. Mammoth here is referred to as money, in other words, the world. If you choose to live the world, then, you know, there's a hell and there's a heaven. A lot of people don't realize that some don't believe that but if you look in verses 19 through 31 it it talks about a certain rich man and talking with Lazarus and this here was an actual event according to the scholars that has researched it and done the search that this here was an actual event and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus well let me jump back up here tonight. 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and, and fared sumptuously every day. In other words, he, he was above himself. He was dressed to the best. In other words, he uh, more or less done like Lucifer was putting himself before God. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. which was laid at his gate full of sores. In other words, he was a sick man. He was, had sores all over him. And he desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. All he was asking for was crumbs from the rich man's table. And the rich man gave it to him, but he boasted about giving it to Lazarus. Well, you'll find that out later on as we go down. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. See how bad off he was, even the dogs come and licked the sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Angels, uh, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted his eyes, being in the torments afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And... 
He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. Listen to this now. That he may dip the tip, the very tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. So if hell ain't real, why was he tormented? And why was he asking for water to cool it? I'll make a challenge to you. If you don't believe hell's real, take your lighter, strike it out, and see how long you can hold your hand over it without burning it. That ought to prove you that hell's real. The Bible describes it as a lake of fire. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you're in your lifetime received your good things. In other words, you lived your life the way you chose your free will to do. You didn't choose God. You didn't choose God. So, it, like I say, it always goes back to the choices we choose to live our lives. And like I say, back with the birth date and the end of date, there's a dash there. And that's how you live out that dash that reflects your life. So however you live, once you make your appointment with death, that's how some people don't remember you, or most people. And Abraham said, Son, remember that you are in your lifetime received your good things. But now is a he is comfort convert for, excuse me, comforted, and you are tormented. In other words, Lazarus was in heaven. He was in hell, being tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great goal fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. This here proclaims the fact that all opportunities for salvation are on this side of the grave. In other words, you're living in the, the time on the side for your, the opportunities for your salvation is right now. Because if you look up, you got heaven above you. And if you could look down through the ground, you would see hell in the center of the earth. That's where the Bible says it is. It's in the center of the earth. Neither can you pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. In other words, he couldn't get the water to cool his tongue from the torment. So he's not thinking of himself now. He's thinking of his siblings. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them. They also come into this place of, of torment. So in other words, he was trying to send warning back to his siblings. Apparently not to choose the way he chose to live his life. To choose God because he was being tormented. He didn't want that for his siblings. He did not ask this grace for himself, for he knew that he was eternally entombed. In other words, he could once he once you go into eternity, you're there until the judge, white throne judgment of God. So that's something to think about. Once you enter death and, and into the eternity, there's nothing else you can do but live, but receive heaven or hell. It is easy to step into hell, but impossible to step out. You know, back when I was saying, just like living life, we think we live in life and having fun while we can party it up, so to speak. But when somebody loses their life, it, it has more impact on you than what you realize. That's something that I have thought about through all my problems that I've been going through, if you know me, you know what I'm talking about. I've been through a lot in my lifetime to be as young as I am, according to the doctors. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. In other words, he was wanting to bring somebody back from the dead. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if... One went into them from the dead. They will repent. 
Now, the scriptures contain all that is necessary to, to salvation. A returned spirit could add nothing to them. And a man who will not listen to the Bible would not listen to the multitude if raised from the dead. So in other words, they're saying that even, even if he raised the multitude from the dead to come back and talk to people, some people ain't going to receive it. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one rose from the dead. This illustration is given by Christ, actually happened, and in fact presents a starting portrayal of life after death. We learn from this, and, and in a stark reality, that the only thing that really matters in life is being right with God. There is a heaven and there is a hell, and every soul has ever lived has gone or is going to one of one or their other I lost I lost my line, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Is going to one or the other the only way to make heaven one's eternal home is to accept Christ. He alone is the door. That's right, he alone is the door. He's the one that went to the cross. He's the one that died for you. And he gave it up willingly. He didn't strive, struggle, and fight to be nailed to the cross. He laid there willingly to give his life for you. Who else would do that for you this day and time? Everything else leads to one hell exactly as the rich man found out and to his eternal dismay. So with that being said, let me ask this. If she was able to come back and talk to every one of you individually, what would she be saying to you? Now, I don't know where she's at. That's between her and God. I'm not her judge. Matthew 7 1 says, Judge not that you not be judged. So I'm not her judge. But what would she be telling you if she was able to come back and talk to you one on one? Would she be telling you, to, like the rich man, to turn, don't go to life I lived? turn and go to Jesus I'm in torment or will she come to you and tell you I'm in heaven I'm walking on streets of gold seeing gates of pearl so let me leave you with that thought what would she be saying to you if she was able to come back and warn you Like that, you're 
because it's over and smile because we had you packed a whole lot of living even though it ended all too soon and in time i start healing but even when i get that feeling no matter where i go or what i do i'll never not remember you Never not remember